Hi and welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time, stick around because today we're doing something a little bit different and I'm on my own. So something a little bit different today. Um, obviously you can see Alison isn't with us and uh, we haven't got any of the dogs with us. Um, the video that I wanted to do was actually a bit of a, a bit of reminiscent video, I guess. Um, so I've invited one of my friends along who, when we were kids, couldn't separate us, always together, messing about, getting up to all sorts of stuff. Um, so this, as we met Gary. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, as I say, we both grew up together um, as young kids. Um, I think you went, uh, was it Woodside School? As a junior school? Woodside. Yeah. So, he uh, was Woodside, I was Castleview. We'll explain this a little bit more as we head on. But just to give you a little bit of what, what we're actually reminiscing around, um, just flick this camera around. So, this is the house that I grew up in born and raised in this house. Um, fantastic. So I think mum and dad got this house 58 years ago. And then just across the road there, that red door in the middle, that's where Gary grew up. So obviously we were just across the road for each other and got up to all sorts of stuff. So we're just going to have a little bit wander just down the path where we used to obviously knock about and play as kids. Um, we were really lucky as kids because we had a, a Dane right behind our house, um, which I'll flick you around now and you can take a quick glance at this Dane. It's a bit more overgrown than it was when uh, we were kids. Yeah. So having this to explore as a kid was absolutely outstanding with a stream down the bottom. Yeah, there was a stream at the bottom of the Dean. And because obviously where we lived, very easy access, um, we'd be playing down the Dean when it was time to come in on a night. My mother would just stand on the steps that we're on now and just shout, shout <laughs> ah, right across the Dean. <laughs> and because it was in a little valley, it just echoed across and it was the same with you, Mum. I didn't hear you, Mum, I didn't hear you. <laughs> so we'd be down there and we'd just be lighting your fires and just, we weren't destroying stuff, we were just down there lighting the fire and we'd sit around a fire all night and, you know. Just enjoying but, what boys do. Yeah, um, obviously, when we were kids, there wasn't computers, there wasn't, uh, I mean, even, Gaming machines, you know, when we were really young kids, there wasn't any of them. As we got older, there was we were just starting to get into little Ataris Sorry, and things when I was like, 13 or something yeah. like that. That was about the first time I got Yeah, up. but as young kids, you were just out. Yeah, and outside. it was different. We're talking five, six year old. We were away down these Dean and we were there 12 hours yep. <laughs> before we got shouted in. But yeah, times were a little bit different. Yeah. So, what we're actually going to do at this point is we're literally just winging this video, by the way. Um, we're literally just going to walk about, figure out what we used to do, and we'll just be talking on the camera about it. Um, Did the Casey still live here? No, no, no. They moved. Gone. They moved. Yeah. We will try and change some of the names just to protect the innocent. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they're not going to know that, is are they? <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Anyway, join us on this. We're just going to travel down now. We're going to have a wander through that Dean a little bit, just so we can see how much it's changed. I mean, even though, um, you know, I come here quite regularly, this Dean has massively changed. So even the, the little footpath where we used to get down to, I'm just going to path. yeah, I'm just going to flick you around again. So path. there used to be a little, just a trail that went down there and then down an embankment and into the, the woodland area and stuff. That's just vanished. But I, I do know they've put a footpath in a little bit further on, so we'll head along that footpath and we'll have a bit wander around and we'll come back to you in a second. Yeah, so we've just came down the Dean just to see how different this is where we used to knock about. Um, and it is so, di so different, isn't it? How much it's actually it's overgrown. overgrown. Everything is overgrown. Anything. Yeah, I mean. I can even see the stream. Right? Yeah. I mean, I down there. Yeah. I, see it. I mean, as kids, like I say, you could get straight down to the stream and stuff. Obviously, they've put black paths in now for you to walk around, oh, which we didn't here. have. Yeah. No, 
that. It was just messy just trails. Mud. Yeah, just mud trails. Yeah. So, so yeah, just heading along uh, this path a little bit. So we used to go to a, um, a comprehensive school. And the comprehensive school, obviously, for us to get there, we came down through the Dean, down the embankment on one side and up the embankment at the other side, and the school was just up there. Um, really good. It's one of them schools where you hated it while you were there, but when you left, you wish you were back. Um, you used to have a, a good laugh at school. Obviously... And you believe they made us prefects? <laughs> I remember that. Uh, well, they did make us prefects. I was just about to say that he was brainier than I was. <laughs> A lot brainier than I was. Um, obviously, the prefects they wanted muscle that year, I think. Um, <laughs> when we got called out of the class, I thought we were in trouble again. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Harrison came around, he called us out of the class, I need to see you outside. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm done now. Yeah. yeah. He's a free made prefect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably the worst choice they could ever make. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic times. Um, and as I say, coming down these into this Dean, I'm just going to flick this around again. Yeah, so obviously we've got a bridge now. We didn't have this, we used to literally just clamber across the stones. And obviously it wasn't as overgrown as what it is at the minute. The stream was a lot wider. Actually. Yeah, I mean, now, right? we, used to, we used to play a game where we'd literally try and jump the stream. You'd have no bother jumping that now. <laughs> well, the thing is, we used to run and jump off the embankment, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. So we'd jump off the embankment and it seemed at the time a really wide embankment and we'd land on the other side. Yeah. But now it seems as though the embankment has literally just vanished um, and just swallowed up under the undergrowth. Um, and as I say, the, this little bridge that we're standing on now, this wasn't here. Um, so we just had to trample through the stream. Yeah, I think potentially they have. I mean, we always used to. It's hard to actually picture now where things used to be, but I'm sure where there was an embankment just on that yeah, side. Definitely over this side. Yeah. We used to start trying jumping it. Yeah, we and over there. obviously this is where we would like to fire, just on the top of the embankment, um, and we'd just sit around that fire for hours and hours until we literally got that holler off the mothers <laughs> <laughs> to come in. <laughs> but yeah, just heading a little bit further through, we might get a little bit more. Whoops, nearly went. <clears throat> Yeah, the Lovato, just to get... So obviously now we still get school kids coming up this bank. So the school that we went to was literally just behind these trees, just on the top of the embankment. You used to be able to see the school from the path back there. Well... Where we started the video, but you can't see it. I, yeah, I'll tell you how clear it was, because I used to get in trouble every day. So our school uniform was... Um, it was a blue shirt, black blazer, blue tie, um, black trousers, black shoes. <clears throat> I used to go to school with black blazer, blue shirt, black leather, thin tie, um, me black trousers and me white high-tech boots on. <laughs> and I used to wear these white high-tech boots every day for school. And every single day I got called into the office. So we'd literally everybody would just get in reception and there'd be a, a call out for me to go to see Jackson, Mrs. Jackson. She had it in for us because my white boots, obviously, maybe in a little git when I was a young un, I used to get up early on the morning and paint my boots a white emulsion paint, so they were really white. But every day, Jackson used to watch out the window and she could clearly see me leave the house and come right across the Dean. And then I'd get called into our office. Um, and then at the end of the week, because obviously I'd do this all week, um, just ignoring what she's saying. At the end of the week, I'd then have to go and see Harrison yeah. and get caned. So, so I used to get caned literally every Friday. Um, but you got used to it. <laughs> Unless it was William Mouth that was caning you. Yeah? Uh, he was a, Could be a bit nasty. He was a good teacher, but he used to have the cane. And I'll tell you what he used to do. He used to... Right, I'm going to demonstrate one second. So hold your hand out. So, he'd have your hand like that, and what he would do is, he'd bring his cane down, and he'd bring it down hard, and whip the cane back up and catch your fingertips on the wheel. 
my God, did that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and he was such a good shot. He used to jump off his chair to Kenya. <laughs> so he'd stand on the chair, jump, and as he come down, catch your fingertips and whip it straight back up and catch your fingernails. So yeah, that was probably one of them lessons that you just ignored because I carried on doing it yeah. for four years and got caned every Friday <laughs> for that, <laughs> which is a bit of a nightmare. But continue to wear me, uh, me boots. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Love them white boots. <laughs> I had an old Victorian dad, so I had the normal uniform on. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to wear yeah. anything else but the uniform. I yeah. had to keep my shoes polished. Yeah, he always looked a bit swatty when he was at school, so. <laughs> So we just had a little chat there and Gary never got the cane because, like I say, he was a good boy at school. I had a Victorian dad out <laughs> So, although we did lead him astray at certain times, like when... Uh, Maybe I was just cleverer than you and didn't uh, get caught. Yeah, that's yeah, but that, that's that probably it. it. You were cleverer than I me. I did do things, but I just didn't get caught. Yeah, yeah, I do admit you are cleverer than me. <laughs> um, one thing that we used to do during PE, and this is how times have really changed, so during PE, they'd obviously they'd pick the football team and, you know, it was you'd have the two captains stand there and say, I'll have him, I'll have him, I'll have him. Nobody ever, na nobody ever picked us because we were crap at football. Uh, even to this day, I've never, never kicked I'm a football. No, yeah. No. So while they were playing football, we got told to do cross-country running. And the cross-country running was out the school gates and through the dean. So... And this was the teachers, so they'd send you off on your own, just go and run about for an hour or so, and then come back at the end of the lesson. Right, OK. So what we used to do is come out the school gates, run across to my mother's or his house, and we'd just have a cup of coffee and stuff, and we'd just chill out, and then just come back at the end of the lesson. <laughs> bourbon biscuits. Oh, all right, a cup of coffee and bourbon biscuits. A cup of coffee, bourbon biscuits. Kind of beat it. So we're now heading just up the top of these the woodland, because it's ironic, you used to be able to stand on the steps where we first introduced this, um, and you could see right across to the school, now everything is so overgrown with the woodland, where we've had to literally walk up to the school. <laughs> still can't see it. Yeah, still even still to this point, we know it's just behind that fence, but we still can't see it at this point. But we are coming to the open bit. This used to be the scrap field, as well. If uh, if you were getting into a scrap with somebody, it normally happened down on that field. A little bit further down where we've just come there. Yeah, aye. Right. So. You keep out the way of the teacher sometimes. <laughs> a bit further down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you knew you were going to get mauled on this scrap, you would try and get it in as neat of the school as possible, <laughs> in the hope that a teacher would come out and protect you. <laughs> But yeah, had a few little scraps there, but not the kind of scraps that kids would be doing now where you've got a, you know, potential of being stabbed or no, something. No, nothing like that. No, the kind of scraps that we had was uh, literally a bit of pushing and pulling and, you know, a couple of punches getting in. And I think the first one to bleed was the loser. That was basically it. I never heard of people with a knife yeah. in those days. No, it just wasn't. If you carried a knife in them days, you carried it a whittle wood in the Dean. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little one of them. Yeah, every, every, knife. everybody had a pen knife yeah, or a little yeah, bowie knife, a little dagger. Yeah. And you only ever got it so you could get a stick and whittle it into a sharp point. Yeah. Once you've done that, you throw the stick away and get another stick. So this is our old school. It's oh, massively changed. changed. Yeah, oh, greatly oh. changed to the way it used to be. Um, I don't recognise any of that. It's mad, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the whole thing, the whole entrance is completely different, the school shape and everything's completely yeah. different. Yeah. I mean, it, it was just oblong built, rectangle buildings. One yeah. That way, a couple went that way. Yeah. Then you had the, what were called, the sheds out the back, what were they, the huts? Or uh, yeah, they? the huts, the science huts we had, don't yeah. they? They were just like, were. <laughs> ironically, prefabricated asbestos huts. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that's, a, that's where we had our science lessons with the two maddest science teachers yeah. in the world. Uh, what was it, Mr. Moon and Mr. Oh, what was he called? Yeah, if mine's gone blank. But uh, I can't remember. 
when we're in them science classes, the, it, we actually t had two asbestos huts that was literally just pushed together. And one science teacher was in one, one science teacher was in the other, Atkin Atkinson. So Mr. Moon and Mr. Atkinson, absolute nutters, the pair of them. Fantastic teachers, but just as an example, my first year in there, uh, shout to me name off the register. Related to Philip? Uh, yes, sir, my brother. Wallop, the big wooden chalkboard eraser. Um, didn't hit you with the, the soft foamy side, hit you with the wooden side. That was my first year in there. Just because I was related to my brother, I got whacked out of the head like with it. it. Yeah, just in case I turned out like him. But these two teachers, they used to have, um, they used to have two metre long roller sticks um, for literally beating you with. <laughs> It's mad talking about that now because it would just never happen. Never happen no. But as you walked in the door, um, I can't remember which one was which, but uh, one of them had a stick called Tyron. That was his stick, uh, and he and used you to. Remember this stuff, man? <laughs> wow. Because I was normally on the <laughs> on the receiving end of it, <laughs> so I used to get whacked with this Tyron. I'm sure that was Mr. Atkinson and Mr. Moon. He used to have a meter long stick, and uh, his was called Ready Break. And if anybody remember in the adverts from the olden days, Ready Break was central heating for kids. So uh, literally, he would whack you across the arse with it, and your arse soon warmed up. So his was called Ready Break. Um, as I say, it was one of them days where the whole thing was changed. Um, schools is not like that now, um, in a good way or in a bad way. <laughs> Um, obviously, the were not there. yeah. I mean, obviously, kids is a lot different this, this, like these days. Is it because they don't teach the way they used to in there, which, to be fair, was a bit brutal, but you did get the point across. Yeah. <laughs> but as I said, that, that was the days for that. I guess teachers moved on over the years with phones, computers, and whatever. Yeah. Social media. Well, that's it. When we were at school, there wasn't even a computer. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no phones, computers. Yeah, uh, yellow pages. That was your Google. Yeah. That was your Google them days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, absolutely class. Loved our days at school. Thinking back about them at the time, couldn't wait to get out of there. But when you think back, I and the last two years, yeah, more than the first three. Any particular reason? We got made a prefect, so we got out of certain classes <laughs> early in the morning. Oh, that helped. We didn't have to get to school too early. Oh, that was it. No, that was a good thing, because it used to be 9 till 4 originally, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, you post that you had to go to, and we had toilets. We were yeah. on to watch one of the toilets. Eye right? on the landing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we would just wander across, like, later in the morning, because you didn't have to go to form class, because we were... That was it. So we I think... go straight to where we, where we were on duty. <laughs> yeah, so I, th I think... Duty. We were supposed to, school started at nine o'clock and finished at four o'clock in them days. Um, but being prefects, we didn't have to go to our first lesson until half past nine in the morning. So what we actually used to do was just, just go into school at far past just nine. Yeah. As long as we were on the land and that we were prefecting for the toilets didn't and have to stuff. Go to form class anymore in the morning or anything like that. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, I forgot about that. That's yeah, I remember that bit. Oh, absolute class. So, uh, yeah, good times at school. Really enjoyed them. Only letting certain kids in the toilets. I'm pushing to go to the toilet. Yeah, you're like going to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Just moving them along. So, I mean, you know, to be fair, I mean, I have got a couple of memories that I want to share with Gary again and try and uh, bring these back to his thoughts. Um, we weren't... We used to get up to all sorts when we were kids, but we were never bad kids. Um, you know, it wasn't, you know, like, nasty. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, things like we used to do everything just for a laugh, basically. Um, and yeah, I mean, to be fair, it might have affected other people then, but it wasn't like in a real bad way. We weren't vicious, violent, things like that. Yeah. We were just kids getting into bits of mischief and stuff. Normal kids stuff at the time. But yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to, Head back down uh, to where we grew up, jump in uh, Big Red, and we're going to have a little drive around and show you our old schools when we were um, like in the junior school and stuff. Um, well, we'll show you where the schools were. Are they still there? No, yeah, they've no, gone they've now, gone now, but yeah. um, obviously how, how that's changed and what we used to get up to there. Mm -hmm. um, and just have a bit drive around uh, different places. 
because I've got memories in my head that I want to share with Gary to say if he still remembers. <laughs> and I know he's got memories that in his head that I've probably forgot. But we're, as I say, we're winging this, so we are just going to bring our memories up as and when we get to these certain bits. So we'll catch up with you in a little bit. So just coming out of the Dean now, heading back up the, the little footpath. At the top of here, there was uh, one of our neighbours, um, Joan, she used to organise, this used to be a, an annual trip to Blackpool on the coach. Um, and from us being as young as I can remember, we used to always go on this Blackpool trip. Um, and it was just fantastic times. We'd, we'd get to Blackpool and stuff. And then again, it was one of them things where the, like all the adults, they would head off to like the pubs and stuff like that and leave the kids to just wander Blackpool. Yeah, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, leave the kids to wander Blackpool, go on the fairground and stuff like that. And then we'd all sort of meet up in the, the tower. Um, obviously there's, there used to be, I don't know if it's still there, a big aquarium in the bottom of the tower. And then they used to all meet up in one of the bars or the ballroom area. And then come like midnight, we'd head back through all the lights and then come home. That and we used gorgeous. to get back sort of three, four o'clock in the morning and we used to do this every year, and it was fantastic. I've got to do it once. <laughs> yeah. Don't step over that. Me and Dad allowed us one year. <laughs> but it's absolutely fantastic. So, John and Chris, fantastic times at Blackpool, <laughs> and that's where they lived there. So, I used to have a couple of other mates as well. I had a guy called Sean. Um, can you remember Sean? Denny. Or Denny. No, uh, Denny. Denny. Aye. So, obviously, he used to live down that bit road, he was knocked about. And then, obviously, there's another one lived on this corner, uh, Colin. Uh, he was a good friend as a kid. Um, sadly, lost both of them. Um, obviously, Sean had moved down to London with his family and he died down there, and Colin had died later in a yeah. car accident. Yeah. Uh, sad. But well, it was strange because it, uh, when I lost my brother, old Phil, um, obviously at his funeral, Colin's brother, um, he turned up. Um, so, yeah, great. Uh, got to have a good chat with him and everything else. So, yeah, brilliant. So. We're back up to Big Red, so we're going to jump into Big Red and potter around a little bit and see what else we'll get up to. <laughs> see if it's still there. <laughs> so just having a bit drive down our old street. Um, as I say, it was, you used to have good laugh, carry on all the time down here. And I'm bringing Gary down here because there's a couple of things that we used to do and I'm just wondering if he can remember. <laughs> so we had a... There was a guy called Neil used to live in that corner house. Uh, yeah, I remember that. And then the next two houses up. So I'm going to go around the back lane and see if he's got a memory of this. Well, this is where I lived when I was younger. Yeah, up, all right, up that street. When I was, yeah, up there. Before I moved, when I was four and I moved into the street where you live. So... This is about, about my old house up there. Right, OK. So this back lane here, the second and third house, um, can you remember anything we've done in no. <laughs> no, what did we do? <laughs> nah. So this was the funniest prank ever. So in, so not this first fence, the second fence, um, they used to have a lovely bird table. Oh, we smashed the bird table up. No, we didn't smash it up. No, no. Huh? no we're not. All right. What we actually done was, we took it out of one garden and put it in the neighbours. No, I don't remember that, mate. No, <laughs> that. No. Can you not remember it? I remember that one. So we, we took it out of, I don't know, say number two and put it in number three's garden. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> uh, that there was one of the funniest pranks ever because it's such a shame that we weren't involved in the conversation of how come you stole my bird table? You know, can you imagine the woman coming out the following That's morning? My bird table. What's it doing in there? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we done that, and we actually done it about a fortnight later again. Just picked the bird table up, because it was one of these where it had the legs and it was on like a base. Just picked it up, passed it over the fence and put it in next door's garden. 
No, I don't remember that. So, uh, yeah, that was fantastic. One of the best pranks. So, we're just going to head up this little street a little bit. Oh, the church is still there, eh? Yeah, church is still there. I'm just going to go around here. Just looking to see if I can see the old house. Uh, 67. <sighs> That's it, that was my first house. So, so Gary used to live there, that's where he was born. When his sister was born, they didn't have enough space, so ended up moving directly opposite to us, which is... Uh, There's a bar table! There's a bar table! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go and move it. <laughs> yeah, go and put it next door. <laughs> no, absolutely fantastic. And then, we're just heading round to the shops. No, so around the back of the shops we got up to Alden Mischief. So we'd um, climb over the back uh, back wall of some of the shops and nick wherever was out the back. Four boys normally if there were sweets out the back. Yeah, four boys, they used to store some stuff in a little cabin outside the back. Um, not hygienic whatsoever. Maybe we shouldn't be saying this. Yeah, but yeah, we used to nick a few fair bits of sweets from the back of that. Now. Yeah, this it is looks, it. It looks tiny now, but it was yeah. massive when we were little. Yeah, I mean, the shop's now closed and it's uh, a bit derelict, but... Uh, yeah. Wow, man, that wall used to seem like massive. Yeah, we used to get across that wall. And as he says, we must have been tiny because we used to struggle to get out with that. Yeah. Saying that, <laughs> I'm now 56, I'd really struggle to oh, get out with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, great times. And then further down was the co-op and used to get across the back of the co-op as well. Oh, gone. There, yeah, cool. used to get over the back of that. Didn't have them big have fence railings. It was just a wall. Yeah. They used to have a fridge that used to keep outside with all the yogurts and stuff. So we used to nick all the yogurts. Um, so that was all fun and games. Now that fitness place there, that used to be the old where they had the works department. Yes, public works department. Uh, sand and stuff. We used to jump off the roof into the sand oh, pit yeah. and work there. <laughs> we did. We're just gonna. Head just a bit further round here and come in from the top end where the schools used to be. So four schools have gone. Yeah, so Woodside and Castlefield. So did you go to Woodside Infant Woodside, School? Woodside Infant, yeah. Right, so just up here where the these elderly bungalows are. I'm just gonna shut the window so I can get a I'm trying to keep the road speed down just so we can uh, but just where these uh, the elderly oh, bungalows yeah, are, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that used to be um, Woodside Infant School. Yeah. I'm just going to pull in here because just want a bit chat. Well, I just took this in. So yeah, these where these bungalows are now used to be um, Woodside Infant Woodside School, Infants, yeah. and then just along that cut along that footpath, just on the other side waiting to see the Moses in the background. That used to be Castle View Infant School. <laughs> so I used to go to Castle View, Gary used to go to the Woodside one. And then just a little bit further around this corner was Woodside and Castle View Junior School. That's my cousin. Really? That's my cousin. <laughs> yeah. I think around here. So now we're uh, where this is, this this field and that building there um, used to be, well not that particular building, but on that field was, oh no, that was the community centre. Yep. That wasn't there, the there was a community centre yeah. and then I think Woodside and Castleview School was actually one big building the where it was divided was, with yeah, a, yeah, so yeah. we had this, separate this yards. This was Woodside here yeah. and then Castleview was further out the back. Yeah, so. This is a playground for Woodside here. Yeah, so this would be Woodside School where all of these tyres and there are now. I think it's part of a fitness thing now. There's, there isn't any schools there. Yeah, and then just where that building is, just on the other side, there used to be uh, Castle View Junior School where I used to go. And when we were kids, Woodside, we used to call them the Woody, Woody Woodpeckers. Yeah, we didn't really like each other. Yeah, and we used to be khaki viewers. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously at that point, we it used to be the old fight. Yeah, we used to fight each other. Yeah. A lot of it was, you know, maybe 10, 15 kids facing another 10 or 15 kids, and you'd run up to them and they'd run away, and then they'd stop and turn and yeah. run after you and you'd run away. Yeah. So it wasn't exactly any kind of fighting or warfare. It was yeah, just khaki viewers against the woody woodpeckers. <laughs> so yeah, a bit of a sports field. 
it all got cut and they were using it for just anybody that wanted the sports and then mm. it's just changed again now so I think it's now just are the shops still down there? yeah there's a yeah, couple of shops shop yeah a couple of shops down, down there, there. I mean, just how much this road's actually changed in it itself. I mean, it's you know, a nightmare just with the tra the, all the cars that's parked in here, you know. Um, I mean, when I was a kid, I was just said to Gary earlier that um, I can't remember when there was only three cars in this whole street. Um, we had a car because my dad used to be an undertaker and needed it. Um, Oxo's, he used to own his own scrapyard, so he had a, a car. Um, and I think there was a guy that used to work away on the oil rigs, he had a car. There were the only three cars in this street. Now, you kind of drive down the street for all the cars that's parked there. You didn't even have there. these lay-bys no, when we were kids. Yeah. So the, like they did start and put the lay-bys in um, when we were youngins, because I can remember Oxo used to have his big uh, scrap wagon parked there. Uh, and when we used to play, like, hide and seek and stuff, um, I'm just going to pull back into the thing again. So when we used to play, like, hide and seek, one of the best places to hide was underneath his scrap wagon and lie on the prop shaft. <laughs> so, so nobody could see you when they were looking about, so he used to do that quite a bit. Um, just in this street as well, what we used to do, this was a, a, a daily occurrence straight out of school. So looking at the road, you can see where they've joined the concrete and you've got that line. So coming from school, we'd be playing tennis. Yep. Tennis. The line was the net. Yeah, so that line was our imaginary net. Um, I mean, you, many cars around. Yeah, or? you could never do that now simply because there's too many cars parked yeah. and there's too many cars coming up and down the road all the time. But that's how quiet it used to be. We used to stand there and we'd Play be playing hours. tennis, yeah. Not see your car. Four hours and then all of a sudden it would be car. So we'd all have to just step <laughs> off the road, wait for the car to pass, then come back and then start playing tennis again over the line. So I had good memories of that because we used to do that a lot, doing yeah. that. And then we used to play curb. I was just going to say curb, yeah. That's about the only time we used a ball. Yeah. We didn't play football, yeah. we used so, curb. Yeah, negative football, but we used yeah. to play curbs all the time. And obviously for those that don't know what curbs is, you'd stand on either curb, opposite side of the road, and then you'd throw the ball. And if you could bounce it off his curb to and it to here. come back to you, so you'd try and catch like the corner of the, the top corner of the curb. If you hit that, the ball would come back to you. If you got your ball back, you could then take a step forward and then carry on doing that. And the, obviously the winner was the one who ever got onto the other side of the road. That was normally the way we used to play it. But nine times out of 10, you just stand there and just launch the ball as hard as you could and say, oh, well, but you can get it. <laughs> So it was all, it was all about power. The other curb where you were, do a doubler. Yeah, do, oh, doubler. Do a doubler. Do a doubler was good. Yeah. So, I oh, good memories with that. So, let's yeah. just drive a bit further down and stuff. So, one of the other things we used to do when we were a kid, and I'm not sure if you were involved in this, Gary, but... Uh, it depends. <laughs> when you tell me, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, he's just wondering whether this is going to come back and haunt him, and uh, he ends up getting rung for it at a later date. Yeah. So, obviously what used to happen was, if you bought a bottle of pop, it used to come in a glass bottle, and you used to get a deposit back on a bottle of pop. Yeah. So, you'd buy your bottle, <coughs> sorry, I'm explaining this for those that may not know. So you'd buy your bottle of pop, and when you took it back to the shop, so they could recycle and reuse you the bottle then. Yeah, you got like five or 10 pence back for your bottle. Now, you didn't have to, buy another bottle or anything like that. You could just take half a dozen bottles in and get the money for it. And then you could spend the money on whatever you wanted or just leave the shop. So what we used to do... I think I know what you're going to say, but I've not seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what we used to do is, there's a, a shop along here. I just let this car past. Yellow, yellow peril down past. We used to have ties shop down here. Uh, it used to be Bailey's. Bailey's? Originally, uh, dies was up the up the, the other end. Oh, right. Yeah, so um, I get through there before he comes. I'm supposed to give way, but I can get Maybe past time. at that point. So I'm gonna just pull in a temporary. Oh, so there's still one shop there, then. Yeah. So there's a shop across there now. It, obviously, it's a premier. That used to be a shop uh, called Bailey's. And what we used to do is, uh, well. I'm going to protect the innocent, potentially, here. So what I used to do... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
is, and I'm sure we're a lot of other people used to as well, you just climb over the back wall and collect half a dozen bottles and then take them back in the front door and get our deposits back. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> no, not, not involved in that. Yeah, I mean, I was doing it, but I'm sure I learned off my brothers. I uh, not uh, me. Yeah, I so as I say, what happened was you'd, you'd climb over the back wall, you'd get half a dozen bottles, you'd go back into the shop and you'd get your, your deposit back. Anyway, I'd done this for quite a few weeks. Um, and then I think the guy that had the shop obviously clicked on and uh, what he decided to then do was uh, stamp the bottles. So when you oh, took, I remember that. So when you took right. the bottle in, he used to have a rubber stamp that he used to stamp on. I remember that. Um, yeah. So then that way, any bottles that he put out the back for storage, they were all stamped. So he knew you couldn't be taking them back. Another thing now that uh, I mean, Gary's just been talking about, this road that we're heading along now, we used to, on a weekend, go to the swimming baths. Um, I can't even remember what the road is now. Um, road Tree Road? No. Where it was? No, not them paths. Oh. The, the other ones. Oh, Newcastle Road? New, no, Newcastle Road paths. Newcastle Road paths? Yeah. Oh, it's freezing in there. Uh, <laughs> I learned to swim in there. Yeah. So what we used to do was we'd, uh, again, when we were kids, we, we've just been talking, and try, just to try and clarify something, when, so I sort of met Gary, he'd moved into that house over the road to where I lived when he was four year old. Um, and it was sort of from then that we became friends, didn't know him that he'd actually just lived around the corner at the time. Um, but then when Gary was 13, um, they moved across the other side of Sunderland to the posh end. <laughs> so and that was when he was 13. Um, we still kept in touch and you know, often go over there and sleep over yours and yeah. uh, you know we still sort of done what we done. Um, a lot of you know and mad things and stuff but yeah just one of the things every weekend we used to head down to Newcastle Road Baths and it was a you jump on the double decker bus um, straight away, upstairs at the back, yeah. um, looking out the window, giving the fingers to any drivers that was behind you and stuff, and messing about, carrying on. Um, but part of this, uh, the swimming baths, we used to get off the bus at South Southwick because you couldn't get the bus to this particular area from from where we lived. Yeah. Um, so you'd get off at one bus stop at one side of Southwick, and then have to walk probably about a mile. It was, kind of Yeah, um, and you'd walk through Owsen Estate, and I always remember there used to be a, a little corner shop bakery, and they used to do this this cake called a Devon Split. Mm. It was the biggest cake you'd ever seen. What it actually was, it was like a, it was the size of a bloomer, so it was about this big, and it was obviously made with like a tea cake uh, type dough, so a bit sweet, and then it would be cut right along the length and then it will be piped up with artificial cream. False cream. Yeah, artificial cream. Yeah. And it'd be piped up and then it would have like a squirt of what we used to call monkey's blood, which is just like a squirt of like a strawberry jelly thing that will go on. Um, and like I say, you'd be eating that on the weight of the baths. It was the biggest and heaviest thing you'd ever eat. Um, must weigh about two pound. <laughs> Not good to eat so, yeah. so you'd be eating this like that on the way to the swimming pool, huh? and then you'd get to the baths, and at that at that time you could literally go in the baths for as long as you wanted. There, there wasn't a time limit, so you'd go in there until you were like a prune, basically. Yeah. Um, and Gary mentioned the the baths used to be freezing. It was, cold. It was just like jumping in a lake. To be fair. Um, so freezing cold baths, but the best thing about going to them baths was you'd come out and there used to be a vending machine where you could get, um, it used to be Bovril or Oxo drink. Um, and it was, the thing about it, it was probably absolutely minging and rank, but because it was so hot and you're just getting out of freezing cold baths, it was the best thing ever. It was it the best thing. It used to taste different when you got out of the baths. Yeah, reason, it always it did. You had chlorine in your mouth or something like that, but yeah, it, it tasted so nice. It did, aye. So, uh, must have been a kind of a chlorine like to make that taste good, because right. I've since tried it and it's horrible stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the, not the best stuff to, nah. to eat. When you're a kid, though, it's nice.
So I'm just actually heading down here now. Gary hasn't got a clue where I'm driving. He's just sitting in the seat. He's just scratching his head. Obviously, this is a, um, a small town village called Southwick. Um, never really had anything to do with Southwick other than just passing through when we were kids. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you pass through Southwick when you're heading towards the town or you're heading towards the beach. And it was the beach where we spent quite a bit of time pedaling down there on our bikes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure with the distance, maybe it's about maybe it's about eight mile from home down to the beach. Yeah, probably about that, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we used to on a whenever it was, straight off school on a Friday, jumping out bikes or during the school holidays and stuff, straight on the bikes, head straight down to the beach. I know anybody that's watched any of our other videos, you'll, you'll know I've got real fond memories of being down the beach. And a lot of them fond memories were spent with him. <laughs> um, oh, just going to flick you around again there. So, I know what's coming now. Right? Yeah, so a lot of these fond memories down the beach was spent with Gary. As I say, we used to cycle down here every weekend, uh, weekend or on an evening and stuff. And we'd regularly come down, we'd have a inflatable dinghy or something yeah. on the back of the bike or a inflatable airbed and we were always straight in the sea yeah. and I can remember there was one time it, um, it, it must have been a really hot day but there was the the tide had been and then went out and it, yeah no, that's it, yeah. exactly it. Yeah, so yeah. just over the over the wall of like the the wall breaker for the waves and stuff there'd been a big pool just left Obviously, as the tide went out, this big pool was left. It's the first time I'd seen it, Jelly. And we, we thought... Tons of them. Yeah, we'll get... Yeah, we'll get... I can't remember if it was a boat or, or an airbed we had at the time, but no, anyway, no. we blew that up, not even giving it a thought. Yeah. Jumped straight into this boat, and we were just literally just floating a little bit, just in... It was probably about eight inches of water yeah. at the time, but it was, like, quite a big... You know, quite a big body of water. It was probably, you know, for a little rock pool, it was probably about... 20 foot across by you know 10 foot or whatever but it was literally about six inches deep and we were just floating about in the in the boat or on the airbed or wherever it was and then we looked over the side <laughs> and looking down the whole pool was full yeah. of jellyfish yeah. it, it was and it, these were all like big stinging jellyfish um, and we were sort of trapped in this boat. <laughs> but as I say, I'm calling it a boat. It wasn't a boat, it was an inflatable dinghy. Yeah. Um, or as I say, it might have even been an airbed. I can't remember at the time. I, it, it must have been. been dinghy, yeah, sure it must have been the dinghy. Because yeah. we were looking over the side, and this, yeah. this whole pool that we were in was just yeah, full, full of jellyfish. Yeah. Of jellyfish yeah. To the point where if you'd stepped out, you'd be stepping on the jellyfish. Yep. And. Uh, and I've never uh, seen one before. Yeah, I mean, I can't even remember how we got out there alive because it was really generous <laughs> <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know whether we just sat and waited for the tide to come back in or what yeah that was uh that was a mad time that things you didn't even think about jumping off the wall into the sea and stuff like that you just made memories come back there yeah we used to jump off that wall there was rocks below the wall yeah we didn't even know what was below in the sea and we would just be jumping yeah. off I mean, it, it is mad what we used to be doing. Is I mean, we were so lucky. To this day, to this day, I'm 56 years old and I've never broken a bone. And fingers crossed, I'm not going to break a bone because right. I've heard it's quite painful. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Jimmy, but yeah. right, the things that we used to do, like when we were showing you earlier around the Dean area, um, and on the field at the bottom of the school field there used to be a farmer and he'd come along and he'd cut all the grass all the hair and then he would oh, it would yeah. all be just left lying yeah. and, like obviously he was leaving it there to dry out we'd get up into a mound yeah we would we would yeah. go along we'd collect all this hair and we'd pile it all up under one of the trees and we'd climb up the tree right to the top and we'd yeah. be jumping out of the these trees into this pile of hair yeah. and then your confidence was building, so you were like doing somersaults out the tree and landing yeah, in this yeah. yeah. Going as high as you could. And I'm talking a tree that was a lot higher than a house. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing we were probably 20, 30 feet up, and we were jumping out the trees and landing in just big bills of hay at the bottom. You were so lucky, man. Yeah, absolute madness. Um, and then, as I said, down the, down the beach, We'd come down and we'd be jumping off the rocks and 
off the um well off the wall yeah you know, like the sea wall yeah and then when the tide was right in and there's a lot of rocks underneath there yeah, I didn't have a clue what was there at the time. Um, Jumping off, you'd swim out a little bit and then you come up back up the steps. They'd be like the, the yeah. steps there. Oh, that's right. I forgot to name those steps. Um, but yeah, absolute madness. So what, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to pull it up, turn them down to rock out, we're going to pull up and we're going to have a nice cup of coffee. Um, Sounds good. Well, I'm going to have a nice cup. He, oh, only, he only drinks decaf. Ah, so. <laughs> Well, that was here, that. Yeah, that was here, that. So, yeah, we'll have a... I have health conditions, which means I have to drink tea cup, all right? <laughs> right. That's it. That's it, then. Yeah. So, you've probably got to protect the characteristics, so I'm not going to discriminate. And I've brought bourbon biscuits, I can still eat them. Have you brought bourbon biscuits? I've brought bourbon biscuits. Oh, my God, what a guy. Man. What a guy. So, just to give you the... When, whenever we used to, like, Bunk off from school when we're, well, we're saying we're doing cross country and stuff. Right. First thing we do is we go to one of our houses, we get the kettle on, nice cup of coffee, and we would always have bourbon biscuits. Absolutely fantastic. I always had bourbon biscuits. Oh, and yeah, um, our dinner hour, we used to head across, straight across back home around the shops. Yeah. We'd go to the shops, we'd either buy bourbon biscuits or Twixes. Twixes. Can yeah. you remember? Three so, pack of Twixes. Yeah, three pack of Not Twixes. Just one, that'd be a three pack of Twixes. <laughs> <laughs> or anything like that. I think we used to get a pound Twixes. pocket money and we'll go buy a three pack of Twixes yeah. for that. So we used to, Easy. yeah, I'm not bothered about chips or sandwiches, no, just get no. the chocolate bars in. Twixes and bones. Yeah, so we'd uh, straight away we'd head for them. And uh, that's always been a fun memory. And we've kept that up all the times that we've seen each other. We've always had cups of coffee and bourbon biscuits. Yeah. And Obviously, when Gary moved away when he was 13, just to the other side of Sunderland, as I say, we still kept in touch. But then when he was older, um, it was about 18, 19. I was 19. So 19, Gary actually moved away and he moved down to Windsor for work. Um, and then from Windsor to Cambridge. Cambridge. So we sort of kept in touch by phone, but it was like really sporadic. Maybe it's once every couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> we'd sort of just stumble across each other's phone number and give each other a ring yeah. and we'd have a two hour conversation on the phone. Yeah. Um, oh look at this, my parking spot is still available. Fantastic. This used to be called the block yards. Yeah, it used to be the Didn't block yards. Car racing and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is yeah. where all the young uns in the fast backs and hot hatches yeah. used to come down the block yards and race along here. This was before it was a car park. Um, <clears throat> So now this is this spot here is where mine Allison's favourite spot. So a nice little park up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> get the doors open and you can get yeah. Here. I'll get this coffee. Yeah. yeah. So we've got the red line. We'll record. Ah, it says record, mate. I don't know whether I'll miss that. <laughs> tell them, tell them, go on, tell them. Yeah, so I've literally just been ranting on for half an He's hour. Rambled on. Yeah, half an hour. And it's uh, not recording. And I wasn't recording. <laughs> I've got the wrong eyes on, I couldn't oh. see the record. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, let's re-ramble. Where did the ramble start? Because I can't remember. It all started way, way back. Now, so what I was actually trying to explain was the fact that why I'm doing this video. It's completely different to what we normally do with him, her and the dogs. Um, there's only him and him <laughs> on this video. Um, it is a bit of a reminiscent video. To, been a long time since I've seen Gary um, and really pleased that he wanted to take part in this video. So the whole point of this video was more for, for me and Gary. I'm more than happy for anybody to watch it, but it's it's a personal thing for us. Um, obviously for like our kids, our grandkids and their kids and whatever in the future, if they want to see anything about us. Now the reason I'm saying that is that I've done my family tree a long time ago and if everything was googled in the olden days parents never spoke about certain things their parents didn't speak about certain things which made it really difficult to find out a lot of history about your own family um but after hours and hours of searching i found out some quite interesting facts about my mum's dad um he used to just live along the road from us for a, a short time but he used to be a boxer professional boxer um and he used to fight under the name Harry Best. 
um, which was really awkward because he was called Henry Coleman. So you're doing searches on Google and what were you searching for? Henry Coleman, Harry Coleman, Harry Best. <laughs> Bit of a nightmare. Anyway, cut a long story short. Um, I saw his name on, um, his name showed up on a boxing historian website. Um, and it was just his name, there wasn't any details about it or anything there, but I thought if the name's on there, this guy that owns the website must know something about him. So I contacted this uh, historian guy and he says, oh, I've got loads of stuff on him. I've got every one of his fights documented in the newspapers and stuff like that. And I've got his uh, pr uh, promotional photograph, so his professional photo. Um, so anyway, he sent us loads of these uh, copies of the newspaper clippings and stuff. And you're looking through like old old newspapers were all the adverts and everything and then they've got the sports section and there's my granddaughter and every detail about these fights because obviously going back then a lot of these fights these weren't um weren't televised or anything like that these were just local local scraps basically mm. so they used to get the the newspaper journalist going to the fight and they would write up everything about the fight so every like every punch that was thrown if somebody took a, a had a fall or something like that it was all just documented and written um so we ended up getting all of this stuff and i got a fantastic photograph of them but thinking back it was really difficult to find out about somebody um and like i said just looking back i think something like this you know where our kids or grandkids see us in the future of what we used to get up to just having a laugh and carrying on. My granddaughter's going to love it. It was, yeah. She's going to love it. It was all innocent stuff. It was just, you know, we we were never like malicious kids or anything like that. We it was just having a good laugh and a good carry on. Um, there's a couple of bits I did actually forget to mention. Can I remember Nick and the Narkies out of uh, Mr. Winter's uh, allotment? I remember Rhubarb. Nick Rhubarb. and Rhubarb. Rhubarb. Yeah. Everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> out the back of Gary's house is is now just a, a back lane. So this is his old house. So there were small allotments for people who lived in the bungalows. Yeah, so yeah. people lived in there. Yeah, and there was one guy who used to he used to call Mr. Winter. He had a the best allotment, so he used to grow narkies. So he's got narky nicking. Now mm -hmm. for those that don't know, narky is a turnip. So we just gone pinching these turnips out of his uh, out of his allotment, and as Gary says, we used to pinch the rhubarb as well, and obviously just sit and eat sticks of rhubarb that was sour as hell. I used to dip it in a bag of sugar. Man. Yeah, I I, of so sugar. yeah, we used to eat tons of that rhubarb and the turnips themselves. What do we used to do with the turnips? Can't remember. Well, we, we didn't to... eat them, mate. No. We probably just smashed them up or something. Yeah. I don't know. No idea. Mad, mad. No idea. But anyway, Mr. Winter, rightly so, he used to be annoyed as hell, and he used to come chasing after you with an axe. And you can remember he used to throw the axe at you and it was, like I say, it was crazy, but, you know, I apologise now to Mr. Winter and his family because we did used to maybe torment them by nicking his, his grown yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it did sort of rile him a bit to the point where he used to throw axe at us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I do apologise. And it he was, was a nice old man, really. Yeah, he yeah. used to chop up sticks, you know, for the old folks. Yeah. He used to take bundles um, of wood for them to the old folks. I can remember once when he had, he had a bike. I can remember he put a horse pipe in the, instead of an inner tube in his tyres. No, I don't remember that one. No. Uh, <laughs> so, but he was a bit mad. Obviously, he used to have his bike, and obviously when he used to get a, a puncture in his tyre, he'd obviously repaired it as far as he could, and instead of putting a new inner tube in, he'd put a, um, a solid horse pipe in. So his tyres were like rock hard, and it must have been like a 1800s bike when he was riding it. <laughs> well, he's probably used to it, he was pretty yeah, old. Yeah, so yeah, just little things like that. But yeah, back to this video, this is why I want to do it, because it's I'm talking about stuff that's triggering memories for Gary. Gary's talking yeah. about stuff that's triggering memories for me. I'd forgotten about Ned Winter. Yeah. That, that was his name. I was, Ned. Ned, Ned Winter. Yeah. So, again, just, you know, daft little things well, like that. We went and we, you talked about those trips to Blackpool. Yeah. The one time we were allowed to go on the trip to Blackpool, I, I must have mentioned it, or my dad or my mum must have mentioned it to Ned, that we wanted a door on our alleyway. Remember there was an yes. alleyway between yeah. the two houses yeah. over, over oh, our street, and there was no right. door on the back. Yeah. We came back from Blackpool, he fitted a door. <laughs> he just put a door on the alleyway. Mad. With, with like a Haspen staple lock and all that type all right. of stuff. Crazy. That was another thing, the alleyway, so obviously the house that Gary used to live in was um, in the middle of two other houses. Um, but obviously for them to get like through into the back, they had like, like a little, little large alleyway whatever, you know. in between the buildings. And although he had a, a door on the front of the alleyway, he didn't on the back. And as you say, Ned Winter came and fitted one while we were all away. But 
we used to go in your alleyway and we used to sit and play in there when the weather was crap yep. and everything. Yep. Just sitting in this <laughs> just freezing cold alleyway. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd have a right laugh and carry on ah. just playing about in there, just yeah. daft little things, you know. Yeah. Um, no, mad. Came in handy for the bad weather. Yeah. Yeah, it was all good stuff. All dead winter, man. I know. So anyway, we're just going to have the bit of a coffee and we'll come back. Finish the bourbons off. Yeah, why not? We've just been trying to think of like other bits and pieces and that and obviously one memory that has just came about is when we were kids um obviously said we used to cycle down to uh down here Lots down the beach and stuff yeah. uh along the baths on a friday afternoon we'd cycle at finkel abbey yeah finkel abbey remember that yeah yeah Finkelabbey. and, and yep. camp and at finkel abbey so we'd yeah. literally finish school on a friday afternoon jump on the bikes but we had to finkel abbey which is probably 10 mile 10 12 miles probably a bit high a bit more uh yeah. cycle there Pitch our tent up and stay like the Friday night, the Saturday night, come back on the Sunday, back to school on Monday. Um, incredible. We were young man. kids at the time. And uh, one of the things that we've just been talking about was that when we were kids and we, we, we'd done this off camera because we were trying to figure out our ages at the time, but obviously Gary moved away from living opposite to me and he moved to the other side of Sunland, like I said, to the posh end. Um, but before he moved, we actually decided to do a, um, a cycle trip down to York. Um, and obviously this was something that our parents didn't know about at the time, because they would never have allowed us. Because we must have been 12, 13 at yep. the most. Well, I moved away when I was 13, so it was before then. No, it was before yep. then, so we were either 12 or 13. And just for a reference, York's about 60 miles away from where we yeah. lived, somewhere yeah. like that. So, some brainwave that we probably thought up round about tea time was why don't we cycle to York because it's supposed to be really good now bear in mind this was as Gary says about 60 mile away and it was straight down the A19 and then A19 it will be A1 because that road turns into A1 uh, Thirsk everything like that so anyway we decided yes that's what we'll do so we got our little tent tied at the back of one of the bikes bag each I can remember putting a white sweatshirt on that I had. Oh, I can't remember clothes. Uh, remember it was clothes. it was sit, literally because we were going in the dark. I thought I'll wear something white. <laughs> I didn't remember so that. So that would help. Yeah. Obviously, we're pedalling our bikes with the worst lights ever on a bike because then there used to be the big round batteries that went in your bike and. I think mine were all dynamos to be honest. Yeah. With so uh, like. Woo! Oh, as you pedal, dynamo, as right? you pedal, the, the, and if you the stop pedalling, your lights went out. Simple as that. Anyway, absolute madness. So we can literally say we didn't have any lights, um, and we weren't kitted up at all. But we set off. I had a flask of soup. I did take a flask of soup. There you go. We it was, were prepared. It was, gone, it was gone within the first two miles. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were pedalling down the N19 in the fog. Oh, really? Aye, foggy. Because we decided to do this, as I say, a brainwave idea that we don't have to school, but we probably didn't leave till about, sort of, maybe... It was about 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, something, something yeah. Like that. 10 9, 10 o'clock at night when yeah. we left home. Yeah. It was dark. And we pedalled down. I must have told my mum and dad that I was staying at yours, and you must and have yeah, said you were staying at mine. Because yeah. we set off and we pedalled down, and I think we got as far as Thirsk to start with. <clears throat> And I can remember we went, we're going to need to just pitch the tent up here. And it was just off the side of the road and we pitched the tent up when we walked. We didn't get any sleep. Maybe it's a yeah. was kip or something like that. And when we walked up, there was a cow where he's heading. We were we, in a cow field. Uh, we were in a cow field. Yeah. <laughs> and we, our clothes were soaking when we got there because of the we fog. We were saturated with the dew. So we hung clothes on the fence. There was a, like uh, a fence or something that, when we were putting the, the tent up or something. So this was a thirst. And then obviously we were still having to travel down which was now the early morning, we yeah. decided we'd carry on pedalling. We got down to York. Um, and at that point, obviously, I had a bit of, shall we say, arse rush <laughs> off my seat. Having a few problems down below. Oh, my God. That was a sore arse, that one. But we we pedalled 60 miles down to York. Incredible, man. Absolutely. And then much. we had to come back again. Yeah, when, when we were 12 or 13 year old. Yeah, mental. In the dark. At night in the fog. Uh, I wouldn't care when we got to York. All we done was turn around and come back. And we didn't really know the way. Because I, I remember 
we were trying to lift our bikes up with to the lights the to see the signs, signs because right. we couldn't read the signs. Yeah, we were doing like Pedal, wheelies yeah, to try and down the, the road and having to do a wheelie to try and get your light <laughs> to shine on the sign. Are we sign. going the right way? I got, I got a, there's a sign coming up. <laughs> Absolute god, absolute madness. I mean, obviously, then there was a lot less traffic on the roads when, oh, yeah. uh, when we're talking about, um, but still really dangerous and really reckless and very stupid of us. Like 40, <laughs> 40 odd years ago, something like that. And to this day, my wife didn't, still doesn't believe me that I did it. Still, still does not believe me that I did it. At that age, because that just wouldn't happen these days. Well, there you go. We well, couldn't do it these days. But again, we used to finish school and off to Fink Abbey. Yeah. And that was a regular occurrence on a Friday night. Everything was on bikes. Yeah. And everything was everything on bikes. Everything was on a bike. Regardless of our type of bike, whether it was a grifter, a chopper, a racer, it was any one of them bikes, and that's what we were on. It was on. all about biking. I remember <laughs> my granddad lived at Thorny Close, and the only way to get there was by bike. My parents didn't have a car. They didn't want to take me. So because I was going by bike, I was following the buses. Then I kept losing the buses. and waiting for the next one to come so I could do the next part of the journey to get there. Yeah. Yeah, everything was about your bike. Absolute Everywhere madness. On your bike. Absolute yeah. madness. But you all can't act. I don't. Know, I don't remember who thought of it. How, how that came about. I really don't. Well, you're the clever one, so it must have been me. Maybe, oh, I maybe, <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah, I really don't remember. Well, it was obviously a last minute thing. It was after school. Yeah. We must have thought of it about seven o'clock. Didn't even have jackets on. No, no. From what I remember, we didn't have no. jackets on because I was. As I say, I had a white sweatshirt on yeah. and probably a couple of t-shirts underneath. It was underneath. probably warm like a summer's evening, yeah. so we just thought it'd be all right. Yeah. But obviously, halfway down the <laughs> the road was sopping like wet. Thirty miles, thirty miles riding in the fog. Yeah. We were freezing this. <laughs> I always remember it all. There was a wagon behind us. He was like flashing his lights and bibbing his own and stuff because obviously he didn't see us till the last minute. Yeah. So yeah, absolute madness. Um, so any kids watching, don't try that at home, because it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, now back home, I was going to wrap up this video, um, but obviously the next day, I've got enough, getting dressed, and I've thought of a few other things that I'd like to share as well. Um, one of the things was, um, when Gary was at school, obviously we were prefects, um, obviously he was the brainy one. Not that brainy in this case, like, because what had been happening now was the school had been getting some renovation work done and there'd been some of the, you know, that uh, hard plastic pipe that they use for like water pipes and stuff like that. Anyway, there'd been some of this coiled up and uh, Gary decided in his own wisdom to start messing about and playing with this. Um, and as he's playing with it, he's sort of moved it and it's hit one of the smoke detectors on the roof set off all of the fire alarms so the whole school had to be um, evacuated fire engines turning up and everything else um, they did manage to obviously track back to where uh, what had actually set the fire alarm off that it was this you know in this particular smoke detector but uh, obviously Gary got away with it just <laughs> I know nothing he got away with that one so uh, yeah he had all the school out um, on a on an evacuation just because he was messing about with pipe work. Anyway, um, another thing that um, when we were talking earlier about uh, things that used to grow up around, this will have been the same for any kid that grew up in the 70s and 80s. Um, you know, before these computers was uh, bike ramps. So getting yourself a, a old scrap piece of wood or an old door from somewhere, piling it up on bricks and pedalling as hard as you could on your bike and then jumping over that ramp and see how far you could get. Obviously that wasn't good enough for us. What we used to do was we'd get our mates and we'd pile all our mates out in front of the ramp so to see if we could clear the ramp and clear our mates as well. Um, I think we all used to take turns, but I think Gary always ended up on the end. <laughs> so right next to where everybody would land. So that was a bit unfortunate on there, but we did take turns in that foot. Yeah, a bit of a nightmare with that one, but fantastic thoughts and loved every minute of that. Whether you were jumping them bike ramps on on your your little chipper when you were a young'un, then later on a grifter, and then later on your chopper, and then even jumping them on your racer with your turned down handlebars. Absolutely fantastic. So dangerous, but uh, good times to be out all the way through there. Another thing that I just want to quickly recap on when, uh, when we were talking about... Um, Obviously, us being one of the first people in that street 
to actually have a car and obviously we had the car first because it was part of my dad's job being an undertaker um, so yeah we were first to have that but it bears nothing to what Gary had first it was the first one in our street to have a soda stream oh my god soda stream for a kid absolutely fantastic what a magnet anyway I'm not going to tell you how we got the soda stream that's between me and him but yeah good times to be out with soda streams um, and I'm sure Gary's gonna laugh at this because I've remembered it so yeah fantastic thoughts great anyway I'm signing off this time <laughs> had a fantastic time with Gary today, just reminiscing about uh, when we were kids and just having a good catch up. Obviously with Gary, he, uh, we've, we've grew up together. Um, he moved to the other side of Sunderland, as I say, the posh end, when he was 13. Um, and then obviously a bit later, 18, 19, he moved away down to um, Windsor and then up to Cambridge. So there's been a lot of time where we haven't been together. Um, we've obviously spoke on the phone. It's sort of every couple of years or something, we'll have a quick chat on the phone. That quick chat normally turns into a couple of hours. Um, but it was great to see him again today. We've had a right laugh. Um, we captured most of it on the camera. And I will say, obviously, a lot of it was done for personal reasons. I wanted, you know, family to be able to view it in years to come and things like that. Um, grandkids to view it, not just mine, but Gary's as well. Um, but we've had a, a right laugh, I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. It was something completely different. Um, yeah, so until the next time, for him, her and the dogs, see you soon.